Hello, I'm going to be going over with you how you create a grouped percent distribution. We're going to see that to create a grouped percent distribution, you're actually going to have to do some intermediate steps. We'll start off by creating a grouped frequency distribution, reporting the frequency for each of our uh, groups. Then we'll, from the frequency, create a relative frequency grouped distribution. And finally, we'll end up with the percent grouped distribution. Uh, distribution. And when you end up with a percent, if that's what you want to report to your uh, reader, then you kind of erase out these intermediate steps, but to get you to where you want to go. Our interval size is going to be 20. That is, when we create uh, groups uh, to, in which to group all the state in, we'll go with 20. We're going to 20 because people feel pretty comfortable counting by multiples of 20. You know, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, uh, and so on. But you could have chosen a different interval size when working with this data. You might have chosen 10, um, perhaps 15. Um, when you are quote, out there in the real world creating one of these grouped percent distribution uh, tables, you'll actually probably end up having to try different interval sizes until you get one that seems to, to work. Um, you want one that will end up with uh, anywhere between uh, 5 uh, to 12 class class intervals. Uh, any less than 5 uh, and it's, it's not really enough so to speak to, to kind of see a pattern. So you want a minimum of 5 but more than 12 and, and it starts to get too really big to, to look at. So 20 here is going to give us, uh, tw um, interval size of 20 is going to give us five different class intervals. Uh, 80 to 99 is our uh, bottom class interval. Then we have 100 to 119, 120 to 139, 140 to 159, 160 to 179. As mentioned uh, on an exam uh, or a test or quiz, I'll give you that interval size. But as said, in the real world, literally you just try different things until you come across something and say, okay, this, this works. This gives me a good number of, of these class intervals. Okay, so our data is 87 to 99. That goes in this first group right here. Then we have uh, 100 to 119. That gives us, well, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. So we had three in the bottom class interval of 80 to 99. We have six in the next class interval of 100 to 119. Now for 120 to 139, it looks like we're going to have three scores. For 140 to 159, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, five scores. 160 to 179, we're going to have three scores. All right. Okay, you want to count uh, these up and make sure they equal the total number of scores. So they should be equal to 20. So uh, 3 plus 5 is 8, plus another 3 is 11, plus 3 is 17, I'm sorry, plus 6 is 17, plus 3 is, is 20. So our total is 20. That is good. Relative frequency is just the frequency divided by the total. So 3 divided by 20 is 0.15. Uh, 5 divided by 20 is um, 0.25. Um, 3 divided by 20 is again 1.5. Uh, 6 divided by 20 is 0 0.30. And 3 divided by 20 is 0 0.15 again. All right. Now, to convert relative frequency to a percentage, you well, relative frequency, if you add up all the relative frequency, it should equal 1, right? 1 whole pi. 0 0.25 is 1 fourth of the pi, so to speak, right? And 5 is 1 fourth of 20. Okay, so to convert this to a percentage, percentages out of 100, we just multiply each of these by 100. So 0.15 times 100, we move that decimal point over 2, and it's 15%. Um, 25 times a, 0.25 times 100 is 25, and it's a percentage, so percent. Uh, 0.15 times 100, that's going to be 15%. Uh, 0 0.30 times 100, that's going to give us 30%, and 0.15 times 100 again is 15%. Okay, uh, when we look at these um, intervals here, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, those are all called our lower uh, limits, and notice that they're all multiples of our interval size. That's very important when you create it. And then 99 is going to be just one less than the next above, 119 just one less than 120. 